um, for the structure of this talk. Maybe before I talk about the structure of this talk, next week we've got uh, Dr. Yasira Ismail, Ismail from, uh, from the UKZN who's going to come and present to us. So a very interesting session. She's a well-accomplished researcher in quantum, in quantum technology. She's received awards both in Africa and uh, globally. So it's something that you don't want to miss. Um, so generally, we are going to have Professor Morad Jaumini from uh, Tunisia to give us, um, he's going to share about uh, uh, their program, uh, how they've structured their program and a lot of the work that he has done to establish uh, a foundation for quantum tech in Africa. Uh, then from there, we will have an, op an opportunity to ask him questions about how we think Africa can can also build on this uh, evolution of quantum tech. It is, a, um, it, it is something that is going to happen. It is a natural evolution of how the technological landscape is changing. So it is very important for us to understand that foundation and to look at how we can take advantage of that in Africa and build on that and build on a lot of work that has been done. There's a lot of good work that has been done in the continent as well to lay a solid foundation for the development of uh, science and technology in the continent. Um, so without much ado, uh, let me introduce uh, Professor Jeromini briefly. Uh, he's going to tell us a lot about, about himself. He's got a very, uh, he's got an illustrious career in, in, in quantum tech and in academia and in working in, in the continent as well. It is going to be very long. Uh, it's, not, it's not easy. It's not an easy one to go through but he's, he's going to highlight some of the involvement he has had in, in, in developing the technology in Africa. Uh, he's the professor of, of, of physics at um, the University of Tunis, El Mana. Um, and, and they have got a beautiful program, uh, an MSc in nanotechnology that is producing beautiful results. And they are also involved so much and very active in quantum computing using the QSKIT platform. I think they posted some interesting results on, on LinkedIn and publicly sometime uh, end of last year. And uh, we will learn more about that. And some of you may remember we have had um, Saad Ben Rashid from, uh, from Tunisia as well presenting on this community last year uh, to share about uh, quantum journey and a lot of beautiful work they are, they are doing in Tunisia. So um, thank you very much, Prof, for joining us. and. Um, you can come through and we, we are ready to, to hear about, about what you want to share and to learn a lot from, from the efforts that you've been making and the work that you're doing. So you could unmute yourself and, and, and come on. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for, for this uh, kind invitation. I'm very glad to be with you today. And, to present the Tunisian experience and in introducing uh, the teaching of uh, quantum information and uh, quantum computing in our uh, curriculum here for uh, physics students. Uh, so uh, let me uh, share my screen. Actually, I prepared a few slides just to introduce the, the topic so that we can have a, a good discussion. Okay, so the, the title of my uh, brief presentation is, as you can see, uh, about teaching quantum information and quantum computing, well, in African universities, uh, but actually I will more focus on uh, our uh, own experience at University of Tunis El Manar as a study case. And uh, of course, uh, it will be uh, a good occasion to discuss the opportunities and challenges related uh, to this uh, uh, very new field. Um, let me uh, present once again my uh, uh, New Year greetings to you. Uh, many among you are uh, connected to me uh, via LinkedIn. Uh, so I, I found it very funny to, to uh, remark this uh, coincidence with the 2021 year. It is possible to construct this uh, plus uh, state uh, so once again, the best uh, wishes for uh, for this year. Um, uh, regarding the topic of today, uh, I made the choice to start with um, 
probably something with, which can uh, seem uh, uh, far from the topic, but, uh, but actually not. It is in the heart of what we are discussing today. Um, I'm presenting a part of uh, uh, the uh, Shanghai ranking of uh, international universities. And uh, more specifically here, uh, you can see the statistics uh, by ration for the ranking of the top 20, top 10, up to top uh, 1,000 universities in the world, according to uh, academic ranking of world universities, more known the, as Shanghai ranking. And you can see that, unfortunately, Africa is, uh, is very poorly represented here, only by two universities universities in the top uh, 300, uh, not more than five in the top uh, 500. And uh, as the uh, ranking is extended now to up to 1,000 universities, a uh, few more universities appear in the, in the ranking. Uh, these universities are mostly from uh, South Africa. Uh, with a couple of universities from Egypt, one from uh, Tunisia, my own university, University of Tunis Al Manar, and uh, one as well from Ethiopia. Some a few other universities did appear in the ranking uh, last year and the year before, but unfortunately they immediately dis disappear uh, uh, the year after. This is to, 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 to say and to, to stress the point that uh, the gap is, um, is huge, actually. And uh, uh, this gap is becoming more and more uh, large. And we, uh, we as a scientific community, students, uh, tech enthusiasts, everyone who uh, feels himself involved in the development of Africa, uh, we should work very hard to, to bridge this gap, or at, at least to mitigate, uh, to mitigate it. So one of the ways uh, to, to do that, of course, is to uh, enhance our capacity building and our skills in, in technology, and uh, more specifically in, in quantum technologies, which is the topic of, of today's talk. Just for your information, the, uh, the, the, the ranking used by uh, is based on uh, several components. Among them, uh, at least two uh, components, uh, which are the, uh, the alumni score, which means the number of Nobel Prize winning uh, or uh, uh, field medals scientists from African uh, universities, for instance. We have exactly zero uh, for all the, the universities, unfortunately. Uh, and and uh, and uh, well, probably for some universities, it is possible to find one or two people who started his studies at some point in an African university and then move to Europe or US. Uh, this is the case for for some actually, uh, like for Egypt with uh, Ahmed Siwail or, or others. But for the second uh, 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 item. Uh, uh, for which the weight is 20% in the, in the, in the final score. Uh, it concerns the staff of the, of the institution. And for this, we, we have exactly zero for, for everyone. The other uh, uh, metric uh, parameters here are the highly cited research, uh, the papers published in Nature and Science, and the overall quality of, of publications, uh, etc. So thanks to some of these indicators, a uh, few African universities were able to appear in the, in the Shanghai ranking. And uh, probably uh, if you want to improve our, our ranking, the, the two first points, well, the, the alumni, we, we, I mean, uh, it's a, a kind of um, a historic thing. I mean, uh, we cannot change it uh, rapidly, but we, we can work on, uh, on these um, indicators to improve uh, their quality. Uh, and for that, of course, as I said, we have to go uh, uh, to uh, all the means that allow us to enhance our capacity building in science in general and in, in quantum uh, science in, uh, as far as we are concerned as uh, uh, physicists or computer scientists in general.
So regarding now the, 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 the point uh, we are discussing, quantum computing and the quantum algorithms, I found this, uh, this uh, uh, map uh, in one of uh, recent publications referenced here. Uh, it is. It gives a good indication about the interest uh, the the community, the scientific community in such or such country is having to uh, quantum computing and quantum algorithms. Uh, algorithms, as this is the the number of downloads uh, from ResearchGate uh, um, in, in this topic. And so, of course, you can, it's obvious that the US and China are leading, uh, closely followed by uh, by other countries here mainly in Europe. Uh, in Africa, there is some interest. It's not that bad, I mean, or North Africa, some part of uh, West Africa, South Africa. And it is more or less comparable to South uh, America, for instance, or uh, uh, South uh, East Asia or Central Asia. So the starting point, uh, at least from the, the, uh, the interest of the community in quantum computing, regarding the downloading uh, uh, publications and reading them, probably mainly by young, uh, young uh, PhD students, is there, and this is a good point to start with. Now, regarding the, uh, the evolution, the very rapid evolution of the, of the, uh, the field in general at, at, at the global uh, uh, scale, uh, this, uh, this picture is also uh, uh, from a recent uh, publication uh, dealing uh, with the, uh, the funds, the funding put on, on, on quantum uh, in uh, 2017 and some perspective at that time uh, what would be reached uh, within uh, uh, four or five years from now. So only three years ago, what people were thinking is that the, 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 the money put on and the funding put on quantum computing will be like, let's say, two billions by 2025. Uh, but very rapidly, probably uh, the acceleration was, uh, of course, uh, um, enhanced by the announcement of uh, quantum supremacy, etc. An update of, of these uh, digits, of these numbers, uh, is, is now uh, multiplying uh, this amount by at least by 10. So I'm speaking now about a global effort of 22 billion, it's an estimate, and it's, it's growing. This is quite recent, uh, September 2020. Uh, well, of course, also on this slide, uh, Africa, unfortunately, is totally absent as well as a big part all of big part of South America, but I hope things will, will change now. Re regarding Africa, um, uh, several efforts are made. At, at the global scale, uh, the, the series of Quantum Africa conference is very good, actually. Uh, it was uh, launched a few years ago. I had the pleasure and the opportunity to, to take part to the last uh, uh, edition in, in, in Stellenbosch, South Africa, last year. Uh, so in this group uh, picture, we, you probably recognize some people uh, like uh, Abe Espao, Ismail here, uh, and other people uh, like Gerald Gabriels from Harvard, etc. So this kind of meetings is very important. Also, of course, Professor Petrucciani and uh, Andrew Forbes and other people also from other African countries were there. Uh, I, I recognize here also uh, Herman Uwis and other people. Uh, it, it was a very good opportunity to discuss uh, the, the possibility to, to, to improve the, the global uh, skills of, of, uh, of our young fellows in, in quantum in general uh, and uh, start uh, collaborations. Uh, of course, uh, as African, I have to recognize and I'm, I'm very proud of the, the pivotal role of South Africa in this uh, evolution. Uh, several uh, African, uh, South African universities are working very hard and are leading uh, uh, at the continental uh, level uh, the, the efforts in quantum. Uh, just to mention uh, WITS and uh, KwaZulu Natal universities, uh, you recognize here Ismail with the, the, the IBMQ and all the efforts made by the South African government 
to be involved with with IBM, and actually we are uh, uh, we are happy about that because uh, thanks to to their efforts, um, I mean. Uh, these efforts had an, an effect. Uh, for instance, the, the, the school organized last year in South Africa, um, as mentioned by Farai a couple of uh, minutes or maybe a little bit more ago, uh, was a very good opportunity for us in Tunisia to send representatives. And uh, I remember very, very well the discussion with, with uh, Ismail and, uh, and Abi and others. So we were able to send one of our students, uh, as you mentioned, Farai uh, Sahar, who is attending the meeting. I saw her uh, here. Um, uh, and I, I will speak about the, the impact uh, such events uh, had in, uh, in Tunisia. Uh, one canton uh, Africa also is a very good opportunity. And once again, I'm very glad and I, I thank you very much for this opportunity. It's a good uh, framework to discuss uh, so I acknowledge that. Now, uh, regarding uh, the situation in Tunisia, um, uh, uh, as uh, scientists in quantum physics, uh, I mean me and my colleagues, we, are, we were thinking for a long time about uh, what we can do to uh, to uh, uh, to catch this uh, this wave actually, and to to bridge the gap and uh, to be at the same level, or to be very close to the level. Uh, of uh, what is teached in the best universities in the world in the field of uh, quantum physics. We have a good uh, experience in Tunisia. We have a, a, a master programs running for like uh, 30 years or more in, in quantum physics. And the idea was to, uh, to propose a new uh, master degree in nanophysics and nanotechnology at University of Tunis El Manar, Faculty of Science of Tunis. Uh, in which we can introduce this kind of uh, very modern uh, uh, physics and technology. So a, a very brief um, presentation of the, 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 the syllabus of the, the colloquium. It's on, uh, the, uh, on uh, three semesters, three terms. The first year, uh, the students have uh, various uh, basic uh, courses on mathematical physics statistical physics, quantum mechanics, and introduction to nanophysics. During the second semester, they, they see also condensed matter physics, semiconductors, uh, cold atoms, and quantum gases. It was also an opportunity to introduce this topic in the, in the curriculum. As you know, it, it can be related to quantum uh, information and quantum com computation, uh, material thermodynamics, dynamics, etc. During the second year, um, and here I will focus on uh, the syllabus of, of this uh, uh, teaching. Quantum information, uh, besides other uh, lectures on nanophotonics, nanoplasmonics, nanomagnetism, surfaces and inter interfaces, uh, chemistry for nano, uh, soft skills, of course, etc. So let me now present briefly what, what we are teaching in quantum information at University of Tunis El Manar. So uh, uh, actually four parts, let me be brief here. We start with the reminder of a quantum, uh, basic quantum mechanics, starting with uh, some algebra, uh, um, linear and tensorial as well. Um, In-depth analysis, in analysis of the superposition of states, the, the measurements, postulates, the cube, uh, what is a qubit, the this, uh, block sphere, entanglement, bell inequalities, etc. Uh, um, I mean, here we are. We go in depth. We take examples. We we try to 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 understand um, very well all these aspects because, of course, students coming to this uh, to this master degree had have, have had already uh, quantum uh, basic quantum mechanics as part of their um, uh, education in uh, uh, what we call in the French system licence, which means more or less the bachelor. Okay, so th then uh, uh, introduce uh, the basic elements of classical and uh, quantum information, some elements of Shannon theory, and then we move to quantum with uh, matrix, matrix density formalism, uh, von Neumann entropy, etc. 
this is the first part. Then we move to quantum computing, starting with the gates, with the circuits. Here again, we take our time, we go uh, into details, uh, in depth, uh, and uh, um, with illustrations, of course, and very simple circuits like, uh, like the half and full addition. The, uh, the big part of the uh, syllabus concept, the, the quantum algorithms. And for this, I, I have a slide. So let me display all the items together. Uh, we started with teleportation and, uh, sorry, this is, it's quantum, not, not quantitative, sorry for the typo. Uh, cryptography, uh, starting with some theoretical considerations like the, the non-cloning -clo theorem, the classical RSA protocol uh, with and without uh, interception by spy, etc. And uh, indeed, uh, we were very happy to start this, uh, this, uh, this topic and I, I made an announcement uh, a post on, on LinkedIn uh, for I mentioned last year. And uh, since that time, uh, I made regularly uh, uh, an update uh, on what, what we are uh, uh, reaching as level in the, in the algorithms. So then we move it to the formal algorithms like uh, Deutsch or Deutsch Josa, Bernstein Vazirani. The, 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 what is a quantum oracle? Uh, here, the constant and balanced functions in the relation with the Deutsch Josa algorithm, for, for instance, the, the important uh, phase kickback trick, very useful for the further uh, algorithms, uh, as you know. Then we move it to fundamental alg algorithms, mainly QFT and QPE, there are also Fourier transform and uh, quantitative, uh, uh, sorry, once again here. I don't know why it, it is like that, it should be quantum. So for some uh, copy past reason, it is, I will change it, sorry for the typo. Uh, Grover uh, algorithm, of, of course, a central algorithm. Uh, uh, the inversion by the mean, uh, also the use of uh, quantum al al uh, uh, Grover's algorithm in quantum accounting. And then and, uh, we were able at the end of the semester to, to uh, understand and implement a short algorithm uh, for uh, period searching and also well the uh, the textbook example of factorizing 15 as as you know uh, here a, a, a picture in the in the, in the, in the classroom uh, with the students of the the, the, the master the, the final year there are 12 students. Uh, you can also see me here together with my colleague and friend, Professor Najer Hathabit Mliki, who is the coordinator of, the, of, this, of this master. You can see that uh, all the students have their laptops. So in addition to the theoretical uh, part of the, of the lectures, uh, all the derivations, all the details using the blackboard, etc. We also do practicals on uh, an IBM Kiskit uh, platform with the uh, assistance of Sahar, uh, thanks to the, the, the very good experience she had uh, during the, the, the school in South Africa I mentioned uh, before. So uh, this is just an illustration. I, I, you can hardly see here that I think this is the part for uh, uh, teleportation, but we did that regularly every Wednesday. Uh, we were connected to the uh, to the platform. The students were connected. They try they tried their best to implement uh, using uh, Jupyter notebooks, uh, coding with with Python, and uh, and uh, trying to reproduce the examples on uh, IBM experience, or even trying to change a little bit to see what happens if, if they change some parameters, so that to have a good experience with uh, with these uh, hands-on uh, sessions. Uh, in addition to this uh, part of the, uh, the teaching, we also propose to the, to the student actually to enlarge their uh, culture above the, the allocated time because the time dedicated to the lectures is, is limited, uh, only three hours per, per, per week for uh, 14 weeks. Uh, so we decided to, to, to give them the opportunity to, to see more things by proposing a kind of uh, projects mini projects uh, listed here as you can see some are uh, fundamental like the Bell inequalities others are more applied like using cold atoms for quantum computing 
some cutting edge uh, algorithms used in uh, research like like the VQE and its applications in molecular physics and in chemistry, the applications of global algorithms uh, to satisfiability problems, uh, going into some uh, uh, specific points in QFT and the quantum coin, uh, counting, and also um, uh, some other applications we couldn't uh, we could not see during the lectures like uh, quantum computing or finance. So the students uh, uh, presented their the work uh, uh, before an audience uh, composed by the students themselves and the the staff, the, the faculty. Uh, you can see some of them here. Here, uh, they work by uh, some groups of, of two of two students. Um, okay. Um, so this is the the, uh, the academic uh, part uh, of what I wanted to to present here. Another part is very important concerning the the, the community, the, the associative uh, work, all the dynamics created by uh, by this uh, this new uh, trend. Um, uh, thanks to the enthusiasm and the, uh, the devotion of, of Sahar in particular. So after her participation in the in the in the uh, school uh, and the IBM hackathon, uh, she started with other students uh, a series of events introducing uh, quantum computation with Qiskit with the hundred more uh, students uh, in February. Then uh, another school with uh, with. Uh, I3E uh, uh, quantum uh, um, uh, science chapter uh, in, at Faculty of Science of Tunis. Then uh, in uh, in partnership with Q World, uh, launching the Q Tunisia branch, uh, other workshops, uh, etc., and more to come in, uh, in 2021. And we are very optimistic, and uh, uh, we think the this community will grow up and. Uh, make more connections and enhance the, the global level of uh, uh, skills in quantum computing in, in, in Tunisia. Here are some pictures of these events, as you can see, uh, 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 with attendees, uh, mainly very young uh, students in, in computer science mainly and also in, in physics actually. Uh, the last picture is uh, was taken at the end of the presentation of the students. With, the, with these students and part of the, the faculty uh, um, uh, at Faculty of Science uh, of Tunis. So uh, here it is. Thank you once again, uh, Farai, and uh, everyone for, for listening. And uh, the floor is yours, uh, Farai, with uh, One Quantum Africa for the uh, discussion, if, if you like. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Prof. Thank you very much, Prof. Um, um, we learned a lot. We learned a lot about, about what, you're, what, you're, what you're doing. What you're doing. And uh, also the, the foundation you're building for efforts in Africa as well. Um, so we open this time to uh, to the floor. So any questions to to learn from from Prof Termini on on on, on the, how we can move quantum forward in Africa. And uh, we all saw the beautiful work they are doing in Tunisia, and we would love to, we would love to learn more as well, and uh, you can, can ask him questions. Um, so you can unmute yourself. Feel free to unmute yourself and uh, chime in, and, and let's have a discussion. Thank you. Um, let me let me look at the chats and see if there are any any questions. Anyway, I don't seem to have anything that came on chat. Okay, well, while least we we are waiting uh, for people on the floor to come through, Prof. Um, what do you think we 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 need to focus on as a continent? I usually get that question to say, uh, you know, we are still struggling with the. Uh, Classical technology and why should quantum be important? How would you how would you answer that? Well, I think uh, we have no choice. Actually, the uh, the quantum technology is the technology of tomorrow. So if we don't start right now, uh, trying to uh, 
to mitigate the gap, uh, the gap actually. Uh, I think it's out of our scope really to to bridge completely the gap and to be at the same level as uh, US or Europe and quantum technology. Uh, we can dream, but it, it's also good to be uh, realistic. We are, as Africans, we are not going to send uh, people to the moon uh, within the, the next decade. But still, we, we have at least, I mean, uh, to, uh, uh, to be there, to, uh, to have people who understand and can teach and can uh, can can understand the technology because tomorrow what will what we will have on, on the market will be quantum computers and the various devices that uh, at, at their heart they use the, the, the quantum laws so even our engineers have to to be aware uh, 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 of how these things work so uh, actually we do, we do not have uh, any choice I mean, uh, let me give you an example. In the 60s, when the lasers were invented, imagine that no one uh, uh, invested in understanding the, the, the physics of lasers. Uh, we, we, if, if that was the case, we would, we would not be able now to use any of the of, 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 the, of the, the devices using uh, using lasers. I mean, at least at, at some point of understanding the mechanism, not 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 just. Uh, pushing a button also so uh, uh, I, I think uh, it's, it's it's urgent and we have we have no choice we have to invest in this field and as everyone uh, um, in this continent taken alone including uh, the leading countries like South Africa or Egypt or maybe uh, North Africa uh, we we are very far behind. I mean, alone we will not be able to do a significant impact. We have to work together. We have to network. We have to exchange our experiences. I know that already, uh, at least uh, on education uh, level, uh, 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 there are some efforts in Morocco at Rabat University. Uh, uh, People are introducing quantum information in South Africa, of course, as well in Egypt a, a little bit, and this uh, has to be extended to more and more countries. And we need, of course, support from our governments and from the the big uh, uh, organizations like the African Union and so. But also, we have to network as scientists and uh, and uh, people from academia. To, to make things easier for them and to, to, to come with with the projects that they can uh, fund. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, we've got a hand up from Salim. You can you can unmute yourself and uh, and, and and ask your question. Hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Can me? Hello, Karim. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. Now I can, uh, yeah, I hear you too. Okay, that's great. Uh, first of all, um, my name is Karim. Uh, I'm from Egypt. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for your presentation. Um, I'm, I'm very glad that there's an active community in, 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 in Asia. And uh, I, I would like to, uh, to, to, to ask you some. Uh, first of all, uh, a, a few days ago, actually, like, like you can say, like the last week, there was like a, a winter school in Egypt about quantum computing. We introduced the basics of quantum computing, and uh, we used gasket out. Also, besides that, uh, we also introduced something called quantum circuit uh, optimization and how to use different libraries and and circuit compilation. That is a new thing that uh, you know. It's not like the uh, like um, that is something that you do not find in in, uh, in in the basics of quantum computing and uh, the, the introductory courses on the internet. Uh, we also uh, try to, uh, to to introduce uh, the basics of Python and and, and Jupyter notebooks for for uh, for for, uh, for unexperienced people because we we had a very proud uh, audience from high school up until PhD level. So I think, uh, I think, uh, as you said, uh, we started to, uh, to, to work on, on computing in, in, in Egypt. Uh, we tried to, to make great, uh, a great event. Uh, and I think we succeeded in this. We also invited some speakers. And 
I'd like to ask you the following. Is it okay for you and, and uh, also for, for Q Tunisia to, to collaborate with us uh, so that we can at least uh, boost the quantum, uh, the quantum efforts in, in, in Africa and also uh, per perhaps do uh, research level uh, collaboration or perhaps a quantum tech uh, collaboration between Tunisia and, and Egypt. Of course, I, I, I can refer you to, uh, to, to the main leader of the Alexandra group in Egypt, if that is okay with you, and also I can help uh, in, in, in making some much, much more uh, impactful in, in Tunisia, if that's okay with you. So uh, what do you think? Well, Karim, thank you very much. That's great. I, uh, I heard about the Alexandria group. Uh, actually, I, I did not uh, yet uh, have the opportunity to, to be in, in touch with, with you or, or your colleagues. But of course, one of the objectives of this, uh, this uh, uh, meeting today is to connect, of course, and they will be very, very happy to, to, uh, uh, to collaborate with you, of course. We, we we have some connections with uh, with with Egypt on other fields like laser, laser physics with the, with the Niles Institute, for instance. Uh, so the collaborations between Egypt and Tunisia in in physics in general is there. We can uh, take uh, this opportunity to uh, to launch us something and to to work on uh, uh, on a collaboration uh, in uh, teaching by organizing, for instance, uh, some events together at the regional uh, uh, level, uh, say, uh, North Africa, for instance, or to extend it at some point uh, to the, the whole continent. And of course, bilateral is very important, bilateral collaboration. And I, I always encourage bilateral collaboration because it's efficient, it, it works, uh, and it can be a good, very good starting point for more ambitious, uh, uh, big projects at the level of the country. So thank you, thank you very much, Karim. Good. Uh, thank you very much. Um, before I take those, we have their hands up. Allow me to just go to our chat box and uh, read some questions that we have there. Um, okay, is there cooperation between universities in Africa? How do we prioritize quantum computing with digital transformation at our doorstep? How can we fund all these initiatives? Thanks, that's from Anna Badimo. So um, perhaps if you can help us with that, uh, Prof. I know it's a, it's a lot of questions. I think it's about cooperation uh, between the universities in Africa, the ones that you are aware of and uh, the kind of successes we have recorded on that and how you think we should prioritize quantum computing within the whole digital transformation um, initiative and how do we fund how do we fund from our own resources i think that is the question uh, yes of course uh, Farai, funding is always uh, a tough question uh, but you know uh, the uh, decision makers of course they have they have so many challenges so many uh, uh, problems to deal with so for them, in general, uh, I speak about Africa, in general, uh, research in general and, and the more specific uh, topics like uh, ours may not be uh, something that they think about every day, but still they, they look around and now more and more people, uh, more and more countries are putting huge amounts of, 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 of money, as, as, as I have shown, as you, you already know, billions and billions uh, of uh, of dollars, and at some point uh, the uh, the information reach uh, reaches the, uh, the decision makers and the politicians, uh, and if we are able to 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 come with uh, good projects, um, with uh, good motivation and with uh, with uh, clear applications, I think we can have. Not billions, of course, this will not be possible at our scale, but still the minimum we need to, uh, to work with. And the situation is not uh, uniform uh, over Africa. Um, I acknowledge the, the pivotal role of South Africa because indeed I know 
uh, I have many friends in this uh, beautiful country, and I I know that they they have already a, a roadmap for the for the uh, quantum technologies. They are working very hard with, with Professor Petrucciani, with Andrew Forbes, and others, uh, and. Um, uh, South Africa is playing uh, this role of a hub at the at the regional scale of uh, of um, southern countries in, in Africa, like yours, like uh, like Zimbabwe, Farai, and uh, and countries around. But uh, I think uh, with some other hubs in in uh, in North Africa, with maybe Egypt and maybe Tunisia and Morocco, in, in East Africa, things are moving very fast and. In Ethiopia, in Kenya, in Rwanda, just to, to cite a few examples. Also in in in, in West Africa, uh, I think it, it should be possible to uh, to to have, in addition to the national uh, funding, uh, something bigger. Uh, uh, if we can uh, find the good words to speak with the, Af the African Union, for instance, but we have to work very hard towards this uh, goal. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Uh, uh, for um, that. Um, Jisalim, can, can you come through with your question? Through with your question? Uh, all right. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Dasalim Kasa from Ethiopia. Uh, I'm an uh, academician. <laughs> I work at the university in uh, electrical engineering. And uh, here, uh, I would like to thank uh, for uh, at first to uh, to make this uh, opportunity uh, to have this uh, safe situation. And also uh, I'd like to thank professor for your time uh, uh, to give us this uh, nice wild presentation. Uh, and here uh, I'd like to ask uh, something, especially as you know, uh, quantum computing currently is uh, uh, running uh, firstly, especially in uh, Western world, and here in Africa, uh, even though we do have uh, some some sort of uh, introduction in quantum computing, uh, we do we don't have uh, any hardware kit uh, to do so, especially in uh, is the continent of Africa. Uh, most country don't have uh, such quantum kit uh, as you know, uh, especially in Western. They do have some sort of software implementation as well as uh, from the engineering perspective, uh, there is some sort of uh, quantum uh, hardware kit implementation. Uh, do you have uh, some sort of uh, such an opportunity there in uh, at your university or uh, just you are working with an uh, uh, QKit, uh, uh, what I mean, some uh, IBM software and uh, so on. Uh, is there uh, some sort of uh, practical uh, workshop that you are running on or uh, uh, that you are uh, only on the software side? Thank you. Oh, maybe. Yes, uh, thank you for, for this question, actually. Uh, yes. Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yes, we can hear okay. okay. Yeah, thank you for the question. Actually, we, we are basically using uh, the IBM Kiskit platform uh, right now. South Africa uh, is moving forward with this agreement with, uh, with IBM. This is very good, and we have to follow. We have to have more African countries involved. Of course, I mean, once again, uh, we can be at the same time optimistic, enthusiast, and realistic. I mean, we don't need to wait that we, we build up our own quantum computer to start things. This is not realistic. This is not a good way to, 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 to go. We have to use what is available, make agreements, uh, make uh, collaborations, and at some point, the, this will be, I mean, the, at some point, I don't know when exactly, but at some point we can imagine that this, this technology will, be, will become very common, actually, 
so the the point is uh, that when when this happens we are ready for it that's it so for now just let us just at least use what is possible and what is what what, what we can have access to now is already uh, quite large we are not using 100% uh, of the possibilities we are very far from that score yeah thank you <laughs> Okay, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, then we've got another question, Prof. Uh, uh, a comment and a question from Conrad. Um, great presentation, thank you, Prof. What foundational educational content pre university do you feel is necessary to allow new students, one, to be capable of contributing to quantum computing, and two, to show them how interesting it is? So how, how do we excite the young generation and uh, what foundation is necessary for them to understand uh, these issues of quantum technology? Well, as, as I think as a professor, uh, uh, probably this is also the case for most of my colleagues, this, uh, this specific uh, task, I would say it's much easier uh, nowadays. I mean, for some uh, aspects, we are left behind. I mean, young people are so well connected. They know everything. They know the trends, the, the technologies. So uh, uh, the, the, the initiative is coming from them, actually. We do not have to convince them anymore. Uh, probably they have to convince us to introduce uh, such or such topic in the, in, the, in the curriculum. So now, thanks to the to internet, thanks to the the, the, this all these new technologies, uh, and and the, probably you you have uh, noticed that. And I I, I I mentioned in my presentation that for the the very first uh, events organized by by Sahar and her colleagues, dozens of students were there. I mean, just with an announcement on on, on Facebook or so. So the interest is already there. So we do not have any problem in motivating young young people. They are already most of them they are uh, tech enthusiasts. We have to follow, we have to offer them uh, what we are expecting. And this is what we are trying to do. Uh, I mean, as far as we can do that here at, at my university, and I'm sure that colleagues uh, everywhere are, are, are trying, like Kerry mentioned in, in Egypt, but also in Morocco and other countries, I'm sure. Uh, so, uh, well, uh, they are motiv motivated already for i don't uh, uh, don't worry about the, their motivation we have to be uh, for them it sounds good it makes our work easier so we've got another end up i can't pronounce the name it seems to be in another language but um if you're can you hear me end up, you can unmute and you can go ahead. thank you can you hear me yes we can hear you thank you very much you can go ahead. okay my name is rafael and uh, I'm from Ghana, uh, West Africa. Uh, I actually heard of uh, one, Afri one Africa content from uh, a meeting this morning with uh, a lot of experts and uh, on a clubhouse and app on iPhone. And uh, I asked the same question because like most of the conversations were how quantum computing is improving the architectures and the software. And most of these people were from China, the US, and Europe. So my question I asked was, uh, how how can Africa get involved? And then somebody messaged me on Twitter, giving me the link to One Quantum Africa. So thanks for I for uh, putting up such an initiative. Um, I mean, you've answered most of my question that I wanted to ask. It was about uh, mainly funding, uh, basically. Like I'm, I'm into more into quantum machine learning. And I wanted to ask, like, how can we get uh, the uh, government to help fund such projects? And the second question is also like, um, how can we make quantum computing like uh, less daunting for non-physicists? Because like, I know there's a lot of figures involved, even if you want to do quantum machine learning. But there are other people who are like um, software engineers who can also also like contribute to some aspect of quantum computing and other people too that probably don't have physics backgrounds and are interested in quantum technology how can we make it um, let's say less frightening or maybe kind of uh, less daunting for them to get into the field thank you rafael prof 
Yeah, that's a bo- bo- our last question, and uh, thank you very for that. Thank you very much, Rafael, for joining us, and uh, for for the question. Yes, uh, uh, thank you, Rafael. I'm I'm uh, glad you 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 are joining, and uh, I think this is the a good starting point. Well, the the, the questions you are asking are, are of course very important. Uh, regarding the funding, we already discussed. I, I, I think I don't. I don't think that the, the, the right way to do things is to immediately ask for money from the government. The government will never give money because they are struggling with uh, with the with the coronavirus. We are, they are struggling with the water problems, with energy, with the uh, basic education, with the food and everything. So I think. Uh, the right way to do things is to start uh, even uh, with the very uh, small groups um, thanks to uh, now thanks to uh, to internet and to the uh, uh, communication technology it's not that hard to catch the minimum tools to understand a little bit what what quantum computing is about and then uh, we, you can move forward and and uh, and try to collaborate with people uh, uh, in Africa with university, and this is possible. We just discussed with Karim a few minutes ago the possibilities to to, to collaborate uh, 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 between Egyptians and then Tunisians, for instance. But but this scheme should be uh, generalized for for all the all the universities. And if we succeed in that, and at at some point we can. Uh, uh, make a good proposal to the government, they will give the money if they see uh, the, the interest of the country on that. But not starting with asking the money, you, you will never you, you will never have that. Uh, I'm not sure if I I, uh, I got the point with your second question, file. Sorry for that. Yeah, the second because one of has the, second. Uh, yeah, as for the funding, I agree that you answered that already. I was looking at it from the point where if like the AU has some kind of um, fund for research that maybe the experts uh, in Africa who are already leading in quantum tech can uh, probably tap into in organizing talent. That's just mainly where I was coming from. The second question was um, how to make uh, quantum computing um, less uh, daunting for people with non-physics background. Because I didn't have a physics background uh, and uh, I started uh, researching into quantum computing just a year ago and i'm actually doing a master thesis in quantum machine learning and it's a lot of hard work uh, there are a lot of things i still don't understand but we we keep moving on i started a whatsapp group in ghana for quantum computing but initially a lot of people joined but when you start talking about the physics and stuff then you see people leaving the group so i wanted to ask like um how can we make quantum computing like more friendly to uh, people with non-physical problems? Okay. Well, as a professor of physics, I I will I think I will always defend the point of view that the quantum computing is quantum, and uh, it is not really possible to to do high level at least quantum computing without very strong skills in quantum physics. Nevertheless, uh, the door is not really closed for people who are, do not have a physics background, especially uh, computer scientists, or computer science students. And uh, for instance, the, uh, the IBM Qiskit uh, platform worked up with this uh, with this uh, philosophy, I would say, it's very friendly. You do not really need to understand in depth what is entanglement, what is the EPR paradox, what are the Bell inequalities, uh, what is the kind of uh, uh, aspect uh, experiment. Uh, all these, all these, um, actually hard theoretical questions. Since you understand the basics, superposition is kind of linearity, it's not very hard to get. Unitary transformations, um, you, can, you, can, uh, you, you can start with, I mean, and then you can strengthen your, your skills little by little. You can start uh, without uh, 
uh, very strong uh, background in physics. You, uh, nevertheless, you need, you need a minimum. And this is not that hard uh, to, to have, actually. Uh, quantum mechanics uh, lectures, I think, are available in most of the, of the universities all around the country. In addition to, to lectures you can have online or, uh, or by other means, or reading books you, by yourself, uh, so on. But it, it helps a lot. I mean, you can start, but at some point, you can start without strong knowledge in theoretical quantum physics. You can start, but at some point, you will, you will reach an, uh, a limitation at some point. But, well, uh, it's not that bad. Uh, if you reach that point, you can just work a bit harder and try to improve your, your, your skills in quantum uh, physics and move forward. <coughs> Thank you, thank, thank you very you much for that. Um, thank you very much, Rafael. And I think your 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 questions are very are very important, and we we come across that each and every day as we try to push quantum into into the ecosystem and have these WhatsApp groups, uh, you know, uh, go on Twitter, on Facebook. People tend to be to be scared when you introduce the theory, but I think it has always been like that, even for classical computing. Initially, when it started, it was more of a preserve for for people who are knowledgeable and uh, who are PhDs, is it? Just like now. So uh, after some time, expect uh, it to get simpler and simpler. And uh, I think educators are also not resting. And there are a lot of initiatives like uh, the coding school, uh, which is being uh, financed by IBM to try and just teach this to high school students. So it's, a, it's an ongoing effort to try and simplify the subject. Uh, I've been a teacher of physics myself and uh, have used that approach to try and simplify it for young people because I personally didn't enjoy it. I didn't think my teachers did enough. But uh, yeah, I think it's that's about people in education continuously trying to unpack it. There is a lot of complex, there is the intuition about what quantum is that is going to remain a bit challenging, just like physics is abstract in general. So when you're teaching it as well, it needs your students to have an open mind and, and just accept some of the things because they work, because we see the effect, not because they can imagine and, and touch them and feel them like what we do with other, with other subjects in some cases. So it's a continuous effort, don't tire, keep doing it, engage the people in WhatsApp groups and try to deal with the ones that remain and use those uh, to, to use the word of mouth marketing kind of approach where they tell others that it can happen, it's possible, and I think it gets easier and easier by the day. So thank you very much. Um, uh, maybe at the point, uh, Farah, if you don't mind. Yes, you can. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, about uh, quantum uh, quantum uh, physics for quantum computing. Um, another point is that, okay, you can run algorithms, actually. You can code, and etc. And it is be becoming more and more friendly now with the, the various graphic interfaces and so on. But still, to really enjoy and appreciate uh, the beauty of, uh, for instance, uh, Shor's algorithm, how, how, how it comes with fact, fact, factor, factoring numbers. Um, uh, I mean, you cannot uh, uh, enjoy it 100% without a background in, 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 in quantum mechanics. You, you will just uh, see that it works. Okay, that's good. But uh, it will not bring you joy and, and happiness to see how magic it is, actually. Mm. Okay, thank you, Professor. Uh, Farah, please, uh, one last one, then you close, please. Um, okay. okay, so um, uh, in response to the um, question concerning the funding from government, um, you proposed that like we need to get together and work on some projects. Uh, so what I want to ask is like most of these algorithms and other projects are being tackled by the big tech and uh, uh, Europe and China. Are there any niche or novel areas in quantum computing that are not being explored yet? And can we as Africans also maybe probably try to take that path so that it would be unique? And then that way, even if we can get enough funding from our government, probably external uh, uh, sponsors could also fund that approach because uh, I know that um, most people, uh, most of the approaches in um, the quantum computing, like what uh, Google 
and uh, Google is doing is in a discrete space, and China recently is doing the photonics. Uh, I think Microsoft has also taken a different approach with the topological uh, system. Is there any other ones that are not being explored that we can also tap into? Look, Rafael, uh, I'm afraid that actually things are not working like that. I mean, if you go to any funding agency or any government or whatever and say, uh, hello, there is, a, I mean, there is something called quantum computers and several countries are involved in and big companies. Is there something that I, ca I can do? And can you give me money so that I can do that? Nobody will give you uh, one penny. Doesn't work like that. There are um, things you have to do before to reach a level uh, in which you have an expertise, you have an idea, you have a proposal, uh, you can convince people. It's very hard. I mean, uh, uh, so uh, very short and uh, kind of brutal answer to, to your question is no, you will never have money like that. It doesn't work that way. So the only way is hard working, uh, alone it's very hard, being uh, uh, in a group, uh, working on a project very hard, making some, uh, some product or some proposal at least, and then try to, to have the, the funding, okay? Otherwise, the, 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 the big companies and the, 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 the big countries, you will not, you will never look. You are not on, uh, on their uh, sphere of interest or so. The, for, for them, you, I, I'm not speaking, of course, uh, this is not personal. Uh, this includes me, includes everyone here. I mean, they are not doing charity. They, they, they will not. Give, give us money just because we are interested in such or such topic or because we are uh, uh, tech enthusiasts and uh, want to be involved in, in, in quantum computing. You have to prove that we have something to offer and something very serious. So uh, one uh, take home message is working very hard. There is no shortcut in this field. Thank you very much, Prof. Well, I know it's, it's an important conversation. We can go on and on and on without end. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. It was really a, a pleasure that we had a very interesting and energetic conversation around this. I think it's a passion. And like what the Prof said at the end of it all, we, we just had to start a community, come together, push this discussion forward. If we get this voice loud and loud and we get strong and strong as a community and exchange ideas and begin to build those minimum viable products and solutions and proposals, then we, we, we can expect to get support. It's the same conversations we also have with um, sponsors, you name it. They won't come on board when you want to start the idea. They will come on board when they see the value. So you need that traction to, to, to just get going in the initial stages on your own. So thank you very much. Remember, next week we have got Dr. Yasira Ismail uh, from the University of KwaZulu Natal. Like I said, she's uh, she has a fantastic record uh, in, in the field in quantum uh, communications and in quantum technologies. And it will be a pleasure to hear her perspective and the efforts as well in, 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 in building uh, and taking quantum forward in the continent. Uh, I shared the link on, on the cocktail. It's a very beautiful place for us to meet again. And now we have one-on-one -on -one networking and exchange ideas at a personal level and, you know, just get closer as a community and, and just bring Africa closer together. It's a very good opportunity to make new friends. So check out the link that I shared on the cocktail. Make sure that when you go to that link, you look for the cocktail because there's also going to be a meeting part of it. So go to the cocktail and we'll meet there and exchange ideas. Let's keep in touch in, in, in the various channels and platforms that we have. And thank you very much for, for, for coming through for this meeting. I really appreciate it. Let's keep the conversation going. It, it takes strong local communities to build a strong continental community and connect to the global community and make impact. So let's keep the conversation going and thank you very much. Uh, I'm not sure if there's still anything else that you want to say. Otherwise, thank you for your time.
Well, I, I, I want to thank you once again because you deserve it for uh, the efforts you are de deploying and uh, all this enthusiasm. Also, <coughs> sorry, also all the, the attendees uh, for the nice uh, discussion. Uh, I apologize because uh, of other commitments. I will not be able to, to make it for the uh, cocktail. But I, uh, I mean, it's very easy to, to, to reach me. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. I can, uh, I'm, I'm going to put on the, on the chat my, uh, well, my email address is already on the uh, first slide. I think it will be made available for, uh, for the, yes. the, the participants. Right? Okay, so yes. please do not hesitate. Do not hesitate to contact me. We have a lot of uh, things to do together and uh, it was really a pleasure. To, to discuss with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. And you have a good day with your other commitments. Wish you all the best in you know, whatever you're working on and take care. So thank you, everyone. Let's meet on the cocktail. It's a pleasure to have you guys here. Um, let's talk, Raphael. Let's keep in touch on the other networks and let's have the discussion. Let's keep it going. Otherwise, have a great, have a great day. Fox, uh, let's uh, meet on the cocktail and let's uh, have one-on-one -on -one conversations. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, bro.